remain silent before him. Can we stand, please? Provinces as they were running for their own 
safety to avoid persecution. James writes this letter to encourage them to keep the faith and not let what they have witnessed in the death of Stephen and the persecution of other Christians have a negative impact on them and that they make the decision that coming to Jesus was the wrong decision. James is seeking to encourage the scattering church to keep the faith in the midst of difficulty. So he writes to them to give them a different spin on the abnormal circumstances that they were going through. And it strikes me rather odd, knowing the reason behind the writing of this book, that James will start the letter off the way he does. I mean, you would think that if James is writing to encourage them in spite of what they're seeing and in spite of what they're going through, if James would start the letter off by talking about God and the awesomeness of his power, or that you would have tried to find a way to encourage them to get their faith turned towards that unseen hand that is able to call, control, or stop every abnormal situation that happens in their world. But in the text, James starts this letter off by saying, be glad that you're under fire. I mean, even y'all didn't like that. Be glad that you're under fire. He starts the letter of encouragement by saying, count it all joy when you encounter diverse or abnormal situations in your life caused by people who just don't like who or what you have become in Christ, who just don't like your upbeat attitude in an abnormal situation that you and I are going through today. And I can imagine somebody in here who after a whole year of facing a difficult or seemingly impossible situation, maybe the loss of employment, some sickness that has claimed your body, yes, cause of the onslaught of a viral pandemic, yes. those who are having to deal with this painful joy robbing disease and these abnormal circumstances that we have had to deal with lately, thinking that if he's suggesting that I go through this abnormal circumstance saying I got joy, 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 that in itself really seems like abnormal behavior. Be glad when you're under stress and do rest. Is that a way to encourage anybody's faith? I mean, first of all, trouble and joy don't really seem to fit together in the same thought and in the same sentence. Trouble and joy don't seem to really go together in abnormal circumstances such as we are facing here today. Struggles don't usually make me shout. Difficulties don't usually make me dance. Problems don't usually make me enter into a praise mode. And somebody in here besides me ought to be saying, I know that's right, Pastor. Because if you were honest in here this morning, you shout when you get the job. Not when the job makes you have sleepless nights. You shout when you have friends. Not when the folk whom you think are your friends spend all of their time stabbing you in the back with their own immaturity and insecurity. I mean, joy, joy, joy really sounds like abnormal behavior when you are in an abnormal situation. And I know you don't want your neighbor to know that you have the same struggle your pastor has. But is there anybody in here that has a little difficulty with this text? And you're thinking, preacher, when I'm in the middle of toil and struggle, joy is not the first word that comes to my mind. Joy is not the feeling I get when I'm going through a trial. If my day is normal, I do say, thank you, Lord. And preacher, in your humanity, but you're just a man like the rest of us. So don't you find it quite normal to complain? to be apprehensive and not to be so happy, so go lucky and all of that in abnormal circumstances? No, not at all. And I'll tell you all about it. We, all of us, we in the church are not normal. Yeah, now I told you. Now you know why you do what you do and act the way you do. 
You just ain't no one. And I'm not just an ordinary man. You are not an ordinary man or an ordinary woman. But we in the church are a part of his body, filled with his spirit and washed in his blood. We are not normal. We are a peculiar generation. And what you have to do is just read what you see. Because the text does not say, be happy about it. Read what you see. Because the text says, count it all joy. Not feel it. Count it. And understand, happiness means that your disposition is dictated by what you have on the outside. Happiness is. But joy is an inward, positive confidence. In spite of your outward context that is not defined by what you have or what you are facing. But joy is defined by where you are end up because of what you're in right now. Yeah. yeah. Joy is an inward disposition that is fueled by your faith that does not allow what is around you to impact what's going on inside of you. Because you know that by faith, you are only going through this in order to get to that. And somebody to witness that what God has for me, it is for me. So while I'm not happy that I'm going through this abnormal period, I still have joy because I know that when I come out of this, I'll be where God wants me to be. And I'm only going through this difficulty because God is using this difficulty, this abnormal season of trials and testing to get us where he wants us to be. And what that means, church, is in order to get you to that, that that he has waiting on you, God had to take you through this, this abnormal situation. So you'll appreciate it when you get where he's taking you. And I know you don't want to tell yourself that, but you had to go through some sickness. You had to go through some pain and the struggle that you went through. And I know you're saying, why that? Well, you have to have difficulty because if it wasn't for the difficulty and the abnormal, you would never have stopped what you were doing and decided to do it God's way. But I found out that pain and suffering and difficult situations will turn you around quicker than anything else will. And understand, difficulties are sometimes just a divine tool of divine development. And difficulty does not always show up as a tool of destruction. It doesn't really even depend on who said it either. Because if you are walking with God, even if the devil brought it, God can flip the script and use it for his glory and for your benefit. Don't worry so much about who's bringing all the mess in your life. Trust God. That's why you ought to stop giving the devil so much space time. Always talking about what the devil is putting you through. Because if you are on God's side, you know then that God can bring you out of both the normal and the abnormal and make it joy in your life. Okay. All right. We are uh, we, not quite with you. But since we got to go through abnormal circumstances, Help us understand how to get through it and still have joy. Let me give you the point for today. The means one point. One point. And that in itself is abnormal for preachers. But here it is. Be abnormally aggressive and not normally inactive. Be abnormally aggressive and not normally in it. This text teaches and reaches us that we need to understand what patience really means. James said, let patience have her perfect work. And before I tell you what patience is, let me tell you what patience is not. Patience does not mean sitting down doing nothing. It does not mean that I go on pause. 
It simply means that I keep on doing what I've been doing in faith with an attitude of expectation and anticipation. And patience is not so much about your actions, but it's more about your attitude. I mean, you can do good with a bad attitude. He don't care. Yeah, you get to. But you get a little more than it to. Patience means I continue to do my part while I'm waiting on God to do his part. You don't just sit around waiting on God to perform. You need to do something. You need, first of all, to do your part. The Jewish Christians in this text were told to keep the faith and keep on meeting in every town where they ran to. So patience is not saying, I need a job because I got bills to pay. So I'm just going to sit here at home and pray and wait on the phone to rain so God can give me my blessing. No, that's abnormal. Christian behavior. But here's patience. If I'm praying and fasting, I'll pray between filling out applications and my patience is demonstrated in filling out enough applications to God my prayer and places me where he wants me to be. And I stopped by to tell all of us today, child of God, don't you let the devil convince you that God is on your time table. And don't you let the devil convince you to take a shortcut. Keep on doing what you can do. Don't let the devil tell you you ought to stay at home. Inactivity is not normal Christian behavior. Y'all miss it. Inactivity is not normal Christian behavior. Yeah, I know. We're in the midst of a now controllable pandemic. But this is not a time to sit in the house and wait it out. At least not for a child of God. And it may be normal behavior for unbelievers to hunger down, to not come out of your house on a Sunday morning, especially after you come out to go shopping, you came out to go to dinner, you went on vacation, you said the family reunion, you go to every sporting event, even been to the state fair and other activities. Then they go on Sunday morning, neglecting the work because there's a body out there. <laughs> and come to this house dressed up like we're dressed rather than stay home dressed down chilling and moving on a Sunday afternoon. Right. Well, I don't know about you, but don't think you're going to stop me from doing what God told me. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and with praise. Because before I stay at home alone with you, I bring myself to church. is to have the patience to wait for my miracle moment. And I know it may not come tomorrow and it might not come till 2022. But I've got the patience now to wait on my miracle moment because they that wait upon the Lord shall be new to us. They shall mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Don't miss what James said. Let patience yes, have a perfect work. But then ask for some wisdom. Which means I don't let the devil get in my mind to convince me that since I'm in an abnormal situation, the Lord has deserted me. Because every now and then while you're waiting on it, it can 
become a struggle. Every now and then while you're waiting on it, sometimes you feel like taking it into your own hands. And how many honest folk in here today can say, I'm as saved as I can be, but every now and then, I need some wisdom so that I don't make the wrong decision. Because I get impatient doing these abnormal situations. Anybody here besides me get up here and get just go to one to look out and see if things have changed. Go back and do what you were doing before you got up and see if things have changed. When you need wisdom, just ask and you will receive it. If you ask God to give you what you need in these abnormal times. And somebody here right now is going through something so intense. If you're saying, preacher, things are so rough for me right now that I don't know how to pray. And what you ask God for. Things are so different for me. And they're so difficult for me right now that I don't even know what exactly to tell the Lord. I just don't know what to say to God. Well, I'm going to close. But I'm going to give you the answer to that in an illustration. Get them out of here. And here it is a family was out to lunch at McDonald's. They all had hamburgers. Hamburger happy meals for the kids and Big Macs for the grown folk. The kids sat down first and waited for the grown-ups before eating their happy meals. Well, when the parents finally sat down, the daddy silently said a real quick prayer and started to eat. When one of the kids said, Daddy, you didn't even pray. So another one of the kids began to say that old familiar grace. God is good and God is kind. She only prayed that one sinner to the prayer, stopped and started to eat. So the daddy said, I'm coming at you. The daddy said, baby, that's not the normal way to pray. That's not the whole prayer. And the little girl with a hamburger in her hand looked up at her daddy and said, it's normal behavior, daddy, because the Lord knows the rest of it. Come on, y'all, get that to the prayer. But when you don't know what to pray for, just open up your mouth and say something because the Lord knows the rest of it. Because the Lord knows the intent and the content of the heart. Oh, ain't God all right. Is there anybody in here who can say when I need a blessing? I don't have time to put together a whole story. I don't have time to put together a whole bunch of sickness. to say to him, well, I challenge you to just call him up 
and just say, Help! Help! Because he knows the rest of the prayer. How do you think you are as blessed as you are right now? How do you think you made it this far in those struggles? How do you think you've been able to hold up in the midst of this abnormal life changing pandemic? How do you think you've been able to lie down at night thinking, oh, I might not wake up in the morning? How do you think you've been able to sleep all night long? Then keep getting up morning after morning, saying this is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, here it is. Because God knew what you needed before you asked for it. And he gave you just the right amount of grace for your case. You got what you needed because he knew it before you prayed about it. And I don't know about you, but I can testify that that's how I made it through this abnormal struggle. That's how I made it through this abnormal difficulty. That's why this abnormal situation hasn't made me lose my mind. That's why this abnormal situation hasn't stolen my joy. Because God's grace is holding me up. God's grace is keeping me. God's grace is sustaining me. And I heard James say, ask for wisdom. But our ancestors said it another way. Father, I stretch my hand to
Maybe you've never confessed him to be Lord and Savior in your life. But if you believe today that he is in Christ, that he is indeed the Son of the living God, and you're willing to make a profession of faith in him, we bid you come. And you would like to unite yourself with this church body by letter, restoration of faith, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. The doors of the church are open. Whosoever will, let them come. Come into the house of the Lord. We have done as his commandment. And certainly there's one for more. And certainly we thank the Lord for what he's allowed us to do under the unction of his Holy Spirit. Once again, it's so good to see everybody. Yeah. All hearts and minds are clear. We're now ready for our benediction. Sweet, sweet spirit. Threefold. Amen. And